Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, what I thought I would do and this is going to be a, well, I suppose kind of a new thing. I'm, I'm going to be choosing some subjects to talk about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get books, get a few books, just cheap ones. I'm not, no, I've got one today. You can hear my stomach rumbling. Um, and I'm going to find books that have a subject that I can talk about something that I don't really know anything about so there's plenty of scope there and today I've got a book on knots or some people pronounce it as knots, as in rope knots, or, yeah. Basically, the book's called Knots, an illustrated practical guide to the essential knot types and their uses. The book was originally £5.99, but I got it for £2.99 in the local garden centre. So it's a little bit random, really. So I thought I'd... Uh, I'm bored already, just... just it's, a lovely, it's a lovely little book. It's probably... Just see how, how wide is... How tall is this? Yeah, it's probably about... 10 inches tall. Yeah, 10 inches tall. Um, I say tall, but you know, I suppose not really tall, but it's got a blue cover with a knot, uh, a bit of rope with a knot. And then three other pictures, like little square pictures with knots so I think it kind of gives a taste of what's inside and before I go any further I should just ask you to um, support me support this free hypnosis or this free sleep service um, and you can go to My stomach's making some weird, like, sounds, but I shall leave it. I shall have something to eat when I've finished this. I was, I was going to do this an hour ago, so this would have been yesterday's recording, but now it's going to be today's recording, because it's midnight. I ended up going for a walk down by the river side, down by the river side, and I thought, uh, I mean I actually did start doing this recording yesterday, or the day before yesterday, one of them, and I started and it was late afternoon and I had the introduction and I was just talking and suddenly someone started banging in the garden so I didn't get to uh, I had I kind of stopped so that's kind of one of the main reasons why I 
I do my recordings at night because it is the quietest time to do it and yeah if you go to my website letmeboyoutosleep.com or any of my websites there's a link where you can uh, support me and uh, the link is paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and providing this free service this free podcast not just this free podcast but all the other podcasts that I do I've got 40 I've got 45 podcasts on Spreaker I've got a SoundCloud podcast I've got a Podbean podcast I've also got currently 10 websites as well Um, so all together I pay out just over £150 a month to provide this free service so if you feel that you can help a little bit towards those running costs it would be much appreciated so I'm going to start reading this so there's quite a few different knots here you've got chapter 1 is bends and then you've got chapter 2 is binding knots chapter 3 is hitches chapter 4 is loops chapter 5 is slip knots is that a name of a band slip knot chapter 6 is splices it's a name of a movie isn't it hitches is a name of a movie as well I imagine Ben's is also a name of a movie. So chapter 7 is Stopper Knots. So I'm not an expert, but I'm guessing that's a stopper. That stops things. And a slip knot slips things. Or lets things slip, I guess. Um, Chapter 8, Trick and Fancy Knots. Now really, I could do with getting some rope to kind of practice this stuff on. But uh, maybe I'll make a video showing you my skills. So there's an introduction. I'm not going to read the book to you. I'm just going to kind of abbreviate various parts from the book so the book and I should just I should say that any subjects that I pick from any books that I might get I'm not saying that the subject is boring because to a lot of people this is really interesting and also life saving because um, having the correct knots on the on the particular piece of rope, you know, especially if you're like mountaineering or hand gliding. I don't know about hand gliding, but you know, if you're and I've got a friend who's a sailor. Now he doesn't wear sailor gear you know like in the navy but he's a sailor as in he's got his own yacht and he's got I guess he he knows how to do different knots so because I think when you when you park a boat 
you need to tie it to the to the yeti so I think that's what he said he has to tie it to a yeti so first of all you got to find a yeti that's willing just to sort of sit still and then you I don't know maybe tie around its ankle or something and uh, mind you a yeti uh, it's quite good security isn't it for your boat because if you've got a yeti there no one's going to go near the boat and this book is by an author and I'm guessing he must be an expert on knots called uh, Andrew Adamides Adami Ad Andrew Adamides, I think it might be. It's A D A M I D E S. So Adamides. And the publisher is Aura. A U R A Now there's quite a few pages in this book. In fact um there's a hundred and fifty nine labelled pages which means I'm not going to be able to do the whole book in one recording so I'll kind of dip in and out of it at times I won't just do like 30 recordings all focusing on my stomach gurgling or making knots but I will perhaps do one a week perhaps and perhaps what I'll do is I'll focus on a particular knot for example I'm just going to by the way I'm touching the book not touching it, I mean I'm, I'm turning the pages, there's nothing weird going on just so you know what you're hearing ah so from what I see from chapter one which is bends b-e-n-d-s It basically it does a description or an introduction to what generally that type of knot is and then this gives a list of a few different ones so I'm guessing I'll just see I'll keep a little marker of it of what I've done I might not actually get to the whole thing because I'm getting a little bit excited because there's a in the introduction it's got the history of knots and rope and uh, although I I really would love to give all my attention to this you know this recording I'm just kind of tingling with anticipation about the history of knots and rope because this isn't my first 
uh, journey into the subject of ropes and knots. Because when I was a kid, I used to be in the sea cadets and we used to learn how to make knots then. I'm trying to think if I can remember off the top of my head what type of knots there were. I have a recollection of a figure of eight knot. And then there was the crabby knot. No. Squirrel knot. Is there such a thing as a squirrel knot? There was, I remember one of the uh, instructors of the the Sea Cadets, I remember he taught me how to make a noose with a rope and then he wasn't allowed back after that, so I don't know what, what was going on there. But that was quite handy for, um, I thought if I ever became like a horse, I could, you know, in the wild west, you know, you kind of catch cattle and you have like a, a lasso, is it called a lasso? And you have the rope in a noose and you catch the horn of a rhino or something you get the horn and that's the thing if you see a rhino you, you're gonna you're gonna get the horn it's a natural reaction it's like okay I got you get the rope and you catch that horn and the thing is with rhinos they're very, very strong. And also, because of where I lived, because I used to live in a council estate when I was very little, and it's very grey, you know, the buildings, the tower blocks are grey. So, the animals the rhinos would have camouflage and actually be able to hide at the wall. Sometimes I'd be kicking a ball against the wall, pretending I was, well, pretending I had friends and, you know, the ball would come back to me, pretending I had a friend that kicked it back and sometimes I'd have a conversation because there was no one around and I said that's a good ball and good kick and sometimes I get into an argument with my friend that wasn't there and end up having a little bit of a fight but we'd always make up and we'd have a sandwich where the sandwiches always did, did seem to taste like brick dust but I remember once I was there and I was kicking the ball against the wall and suddenly there was this rhino there and I thought I can't believe it the one time I don't have my my lasso my rope and my lasso on it could not believe it but then what was what was a girl to do? I didn't know. I mean, the thing is, so I thought, I've got to be clever here. And I've got to, I've got to be creative. Because I, I, you know, if you've watched the A-Team, you know that you can pretty much make anything out of garbage. You can, you, you know, you go into any anywhere and you can, doesn't matter what's in there if it's just a, a cupboard with 
cardboard and false teeth, you can still come out with a, an armoured vehicle. So that's what I did, and I thought, I know what I'll do. So I made a little lasso of my, my own, but all I had was five elastic bands and a daisy ring. So I thought, well, I used the daisy ring as the the lasso, lasso bit, but the elastic bands would be like the holder, and you know the whole hold on to it, like the the rope part, and. The thing is, by the time I'd made the daisy ring, the daisy chain, or whatever you want to call it, the uh, rhino had gone. Because the problem was, it was November when the the rhino was there, and I had to wait till the spring before the daisies kind of bloomed. It was just, I guess, bad timing in a way although no one ever seems to say good timing do they need to be more positive I'm really into positivity at the moment for example I'm positive that I need to eat and it's quite strange because I kind of Sometimes I really want to have something to eat and then I'll go into the bathroom and I'll see my belly and I think I don't really need to eat for about six months, surely. And then uh, it's like an old joke but the mirror says don't call me Shirley and we laugh. So, I can't remember other ropes, knots that I learned. So, eight, shape of eight. Did I say shape of seven or shape of eight? Shape of eight. Um, the slip knot, that is what is for the... Ah, I'm not looking at the book. Now you won't believe. You might think, "Oh, he's just looking at the book," and now he, no, 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 I'm not. The book is upside down or facing downwards, and it's lying on top of my laptop. I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at at. Or I'm looking at it. I'm not looking inside it but I just remembered the slip knot because with the lasso it slips doesn't it it goes from being open to being closed so that you can catch the the horse or the zebra or you know the cattle for people that like to do that sort of stuff I don't know if people still do that now but I've seen it in movies so it must be true and trying to think if I ever used a knot in reality I did I saw my dad use a knot to drag one car behind his car and he had a or was it a was it a trailer 
I like the name trailer because it does what it says, doesn't it? It trails, but that's not really what it's about. It trails, but and I like the word because it kind of explains the action, but not the intent, not the actual, not the job that it does. Can you imagine if you were a trailer? And people just, you know, calling you, you're just, oh, you're a trailer. You just get, you trail behind a car. But no, I'm much more than that. I carry things. Yeah, but you're not called a carrier, are you? Yeah, it's not a bad thing, really, is it? It's not the most uh, popular term. I'd rather be called a trailer than a carrier. I don't know, um, I met a carrier bag the other day and he, she seemed quite happy. Look, you just made that up, you didn't meet a carrier bag. But my question to you, apart from why did you make it up, because it's absurd, why do you automatically make a carrier bag female? What do you mean? You said she. You said you, you met a carrier bag the other day and she seemed happy. Oh, I meant a handbag, not carrier bag. Well, what's, what's the difference? Well, one one carries shopping and the other carries like you know, it's a lot of difference. You don't, you're not going to spend two hundred, three hundred dollars on a carrier bag. I don't mean what's the difference between the actual items. I mean, what's the difference between, you know, calling them she and he? What are you saying? You don't know what the difference is between a, a he and a she? No, I'm not saying that. Although, if you want to tell me, that's fine. No, I don't want to tell you. This is a family show. No, it's not. It's not a family show. How many families? Imagine everyone's going to sit down. Oh, we've all had our dinner now, family. Now let's, let's, let's all cosy up on the settee and listen to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. That's it. That's you know, the whole family sitting around. Could happen. Very unlikely. It might happen. Uh, I don't think so. You don't know though, do you? Well, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Ah, but it might. Well, lots of things might. Yeah. I've kind of run out of things to say now. I should just get back on to talking about the knots. Yeah, I suppose you could, but it's very boring, isn't it? Doesn't it bore you talking about knots? Well, yeah, it's supposed. To, well, yeah. If I'm honest, it's a, it's not uh, the most exciting subject, but then you know it's not supposed to be, is it? What, what do you mean? Well, I mean, knots is going to be interesting for a lot of people, and it's a very, you know, important subject for a lot of people. However, I think it's a little bit like it's like eating, isn't it? You know, it's you go into a restaurant and have a lovely meal, but you don't really want to talk about it afterwards, do you? I don't know, I think a lot of people probably might do. What? Well, how would that conversation go? Oh, do you remember last month when we were eating? Like, you eat every day. Yeah, but if it's a special restaurant, 
What do you mean by special? No, I don't mean that. I mean, if it's a, um, you know, like a expensive restaurant. Or show me a cheap restaurant. No, I don't mean that. I mean, I thought you were going to say McDonald's then. No, I don't mean that. No, no, I wouldn't say McDonald's. It's not really a restaurant, is it? Well, they do call themselves a restaurant. How do you differentiate between McDonald's and a restaurant? A restaurant is somewhere that you get served. Where you have a a member of the human race that serves you. Are you saying that just so you don't say waitress or waiter? Yeah, yeah, it makes it easier. What's saying a member of the human race? Yeah, yeah. I don't mean that. I mean, just saying it's, it's, uh, it makes it a bit easier. It's a bit vague though, isn't it? A bit vague. Well, yeah, a bit vague. I mean, you can't, you know, if you if you go down that road, what road? No, I mean, if you though, if you go down that road of thinking, oh, I was going to say it, I wasn't going to plan on going down any road. I'm quite comfortable at home now. I don't want to go out. No, I didn't mean that you needed to go out. Oh, that's good. So I'm quite comfortable now. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, what I was thinking, if you go down the road of using that term, a human being, in kind of every situation, it could cause, I don't know, it could make it just a bit strange. Well, I suppose so, I don't know. Have you got any examples? Or she would just carry on talking about knots. No, no, I'll think of an example. Anything oh, <laughs> anything to avoid talking about knots. Yeah, but you did buy the book. I mean, it cost you £2.99. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's... I, I want to be boring. I want to talk about boring. Well... I don't want to be disrespectful to the book or to the author or to the subject. But I can only... It's... it's I for me, personally, um, not doesn't quite get my juices flowing. Yeah, but you're not really supposed to be getting your juices flowing, are you? It's not really what this is about. It's a family show. No, I don't mean... I don't mean that. Um, I just... I, for example, stamp collecting would be something that I perhaps would talk about. Yeah, but that... that wouldn't that uh, annoy people that really love stamps? Yeah, possibly, and I don't really want to, you know, I don't want to do that to people, because we all have our own interests, don't we, things that, I mean, for example, my interest is doing this, uh, you know, making podcasts, uh, trying to help people, doing hypnosis stuff, and but pretty much no one's interested in what I'm doing other than those people that use it. You know, as far as like family, friends, no one's no one's interested. It's boring to them. Yeah, it's boring to me too. Well, that's a bit rude, isn't it? Well, no, you did ask. No, I didn't ask. At no point did I ask for your opinion about whether or not you thought the thing that I 
I'm most passionate about in my life was boring to you. Well, I don't mean that. I mean, it's just, it's, well, it's not exciting, is it? It's not motor racing. You know, it's not swimming with sharks. It's not like pottery. Pottery. Yeah, pottery, you know, that thing that potters do. Yeah, I know what pottery is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. No. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I say no. I understand it could be interesting for people that are really interested in it. And that's, that is kind of the the thing when it comes to what might be construed as boring and interesting is kind of down to the individual's tastes and likes. Yeah, that was a lot of words, wasn't it? Yeah, I suppose. Um, I don't know. I just... It's kind of like coin collecting or train spotting. It, you know, it's not something that I'm particularly uh, enamoured, en enamoured, enamoured with. Enamoured, enamoured. Aminid. Interested. Yeah. Should we just stick with that word? Okay. Interested. And, and we're all different, aren't we? We've all got our own likes and things that we enjoy. But I kind of, you know... I want to talk about this stuff but at the same time I don't know kind of I don't know not put it down Yeah. What was with the big pause? Because you start talking and you start paused. Oh no, I was watching telly. What do you mean? You know, television. It's that. It's, the th it's my best friend in the corner of the room. Oh, that's funny. Don't, don't talk to me like that. No, I don't mean that. I'm saying it's it's funny. Friend in the corner of the room. You were making fun of me. No, I wasn't. So, um... The reason why it's not turned off is because when I turn the telly off, the TV makes lots of, like, clicking sounds that are quite loud. So I kind of leave it on, on silent. And usually I kind of ignore it, but there's a film that's quite good that I started watching before I began this recording. And I've seen it before, but there's something about a film that's got no volume it just sound it doesn't sound, sound of anything it's it's a bit different it's a different experience you know especially when you're talking through it mm, let's have a little drink there So, yeah, the whole point is I do want to talk about 
boring subjects, but it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's boring doing it. Well, why don't you just give it a go? You got the book. Yeah, I know. Also, I've noticed that your uh, your accent is changing through this conversation. What do you mean? Don't worry. Right, I'm gonna. What the heck is that? So, I'm gonna read a little bit of this book, The History of the Knots and Rope. And I'll just read a little bit. Ever since man began to use the objects, plants, and creatures around him to make his life easier, he has been tying knots. Indeed, it is widely thought that the thir- the first knots were tied in Neolithic times when Neolithic man or woman human being first tied a stone to a stick creating a tool or weapon or this is my little bit maybe they were playing conkers so I remember another bit of rope that I used to uh I was going to say this, making this recording, it's money for old rope. Uh, so I used to, uh, when I was a when I was a kid, I don't know how old, probably eight, nine, ten, kind of era, period, and I got a for Christmas. I think it would be. I got a magic set and it was a Paul Daniels magic kit. I'm actually becoming more interested in in knots now. I didn't think that would have happened. Perhaps I should get myself a book on mathematics. It's not a bad idea because as well as reading the book, I can actually learn something at the same time. So if I keep doing this for the next 20 years, I could have a really wide knowledge base on subjects that I have no interest in. However, it may and probably would expand my my mind and the way I view the world perhaps have more I don't know more of a a different outlook a wider spectrum of thinking perhaps I had this magic set from Paul Daniels 
I say from Paul Daniels I mean he didn't give it to me personally he his wig delivered it to me knocked on the door this is wig this hairpiece there there you go this is from Paul me daddy and uh, handed over the magic set I said oh thank you I said, I said you're just a hairpiece you're just a wig how, how did you manage to get here as well as carrying this big box and hold that big box and press the doorbell at the same time how did you manage to do that and the wig said well, now that's magic so was, we laughed I said that's pretty good pretty clever this, and, uh, the wig said that's magic I said okay I didn't realise it was going to repeat itself I said uh, so I said what do you think of the, the magic set that you've given me I said, do you think I like it? I said, you might, but not a lot. Oh, okay. Didn't seem very positive. He said, he said oh, I gotta go now. I said, okay. Gave me a kiss, made out for a few hours, and then he left. And so I had this magic kit, I had this magic set. And I don't know why, I don't know why, but I have a memory of actually peeling off the plastic, like the uh, the outer layer that was surrounding the box. Now it might not be an actual memory of that particular box at that particular time it might be kind of a shared memory with other times in the past and in the future from that time that I have opened uh, taken the plastic off of boxes so but I have this kind of memory of with my teeth like on the edge of the box there'd be a little bobbly bit of plastic just kind of on the corner and I'd like grab it and I'd just tear it a little bit and like tear the like a strip of plastic off of the corner and the a bit of the side and then I could put my hand underneath and push my hand all the way through all the way down the box and just push my hand in and stretch it out and the plastic would just break and I had that memory of doing that but as I said it might not be a memory from that actual magic box that I had but I'm pretty sure that I've done that probably quite a few times with various items of boxes for example from the top of my head uh, jigsaw puzzles they'd have that kind of plastic coating and what else would have that um, hmm. games like board games which I think is a very good word for it I don't know if I've ever played a game that didn't bore me and what other things um I mean, how can someone spend hours playing Monopoly? 
I mean, even when I was 10, I'd be sitting there thinking, I could be getting drunk. Well, I didn't even drink. I wasn't allowed to drink. But I knew that anything would be more interesting than sitting there, waiting to move me, me hat. Was it a hat that I had? I wanted to be the dog. But no, no, had to be the hat. If I can't, if I can't be the dog, can I be the iron? No, got to be the hat. But I want to be the dog. No. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's, we used to play quite a few games. I think my favourite, my favourite game was, was it, was it Generation? I don't know why, because there used to be a TV show called The Generation Game. But there used to be a board game called Generation. And it might have been called The Generation Game. But it had nothing to do with The Generation Game television show that was hosted by Bruce Forsyth and... Who's the other one? Who was my favourite out of all of them? And he used to say, Shut that door. Um, What was his name will come to me in a minute. But other people have done it later on. Was his name Gary? Not Gary Neville. Gary... Um, if it comes to me I'll, I'll say it but other people I think Jim Davidson did it for a while and Sue Perkins Kim and Sue or Sue and Sue and Annie or, I think they did it recently Gary Bobby Gary I used to really like him because he's very funny. Very, very funny. But I can't remember his name. Um, not, uh, not Elton John, no. Oh, but he was great. But anyway, he, he did it. And then he stopped. And then um, Brucey took over again. That was in the, I suppose, early 80s, I guess. And uh, they used to kind of have these, they'd have like a group of people, like families, I think, playing against each other. So, for example, there'd be a potterer. A potterer doing pottery on a pottering uh, stall. It's not stable, you know the the turntable thing, thingy. And they'd be they'd kind of like make a a vase or a vase. I mean, vase is the right term, but those some people might call it a vase I call it a vasi so um, and they'd make this thing out of clay and the potterer would like it would be like really good and it did him or it could be a, a human a human would do it and uh, it'd be like really quick and easy and everything so they do it once and then the other people 
were watching and then they were told to do it you know to copy and give it a go so the audience would laugh at the contestants trying to do something that they'd never done before and they would perhaps make a big mess and it'd look very much different from the vasi that the potterer had originally produced very different almost unidentical you could say and I used to watch it when I was young for years not I mean the program probably lasted about 50 minutes but you know over a span of time Gary Grayson no Larry Grayson Larry Grayson that's the presenter that took over from Bruce Forsyth and then Larry Grayson took over and then Bruce Forsyth took over again when Larry Grayson left and he was brilliant he um, was just really funny very funny so if you haven't heard of Larry Grayson then check him out on WooTube and then at the end of the show they'd have a conveyor belt with lots of stuff and the person the winner of the show would basically be sitting on a stool or a chair I can't remember but it was it was a piece of furniture that supported their body and they would watch the conveyor belt as these um it could be anything like uh, a toaster or a kettle or um, you know a cruise to Syria or you know whatever it could be like a really good good gift and there'd always be a cuddly toy always be a cuddly toy so you never had to really remember that because there always was a cuddly toy and uh, the idea is that I think there were about 30 seconds of all these different items and then they had to remember those items that they'd seen and if I remember correctly there'd be a big board with a picture of each item which would come open when they remembered it so whatever they remembered they got to take home with them and I think that was it there might have been a bigger prize but I don't remember or there might have been a thing where they remembered if they remembered something let's say the toaster or the packet of eggs or you know something and that would be also lead to a bigger prize like a uh, a trailer I don't know because I know in some places trailers they're not things that you carry stuff in trailer could be like a thing you live in like a trailer park could be where caravans live or caravans and humans living in harmony together free loving each other and generation the game that I had oh no is it generation 
Am I thinking of Kaplunk? Or Buckaroo? No, it's Buck. No, not Buckaroo. There was this game, and it had like a little globe in the middle of it. And you used to push it down, and there'd be dice in there. And it basically click, and then you and whatever the dice came on, you would move around the board, and there'd be I don't know four people could play something like that, and there'd be colours. I think it was green, blue, yellow, and red. I think green, blue, yellow, red. There's four players, and you all start off with. Something like six, six little things that fitted into the holes. They fitted nice and snugly, and it was a case of going around the board. Or it was like a every, there were lots of these little plastic little holes that you could fit your. It's like a, I suppose like a, a member of a little little team. So you could fit your member into the little hole, and as you moved your member around, whichever member, whichever got the most into the most holes, you know, with the dice and got around, and you managed to fit into this slot. So you'd fit your like a slit, really, of where there was like one, two, I guess six. Six spaces in this little this slit at the in the middle, so you'd fit your members into the slit, to the slot or slit. I don't know what the right word is, and it would be whoever got there first would be the winner. So sometimes I'd play it with myself. Don't know what I'm telling you that. Just sometimes I would. So I'd I'd have all six. I'd have all four people, and I play. The weird thing is, is sometimes I still lost. So this magic kit. I suppose the only reason I was sort of telling you about it is because it had a rope trick. And the rope trick was, I think you did a knot and then it came undone. Yeah. So let's see how far I got into the book. Right, I did. Okay. I did one paragraph of the introduction. So maybe another time I'll read a little bit more of this book. So that's got to be the end, really. It's we're over an hour in. So thank you very much for listening, and I will speak to you another time.